so welcome to our uh, second diversity conference, which is called Action Not Words, and we'll come back to the importance of that choice of title later. So on to the conference itself, um, I'm just going to say a few words uh, by way of uh, introduction and a bit of scene setting. As I said, the title of this is Action Not Words, and I, and I think that that's uh, very important. Uh, I think we all probably know very well that we have challenges when it comes to diversity and inclusion. And I don't want to spend a great deal of time going over those challenges and talking about them because I want to get onto the solutions quickly. But just a few statistics which I think paint a picture. Um, and many of you may know these already. Uh, only 13% of broadcast employees are from BAME backgrounds. Uh, frankly, that's a bit embarrassing. Uh, there's a 14% uh, pay gap between the average pay between men and women, equally embarrassing. Uh, and something which I think uh, really strikes a chord with uh, me and maybe with many of you is that 60%, 60% of TV workers are from better off backgrounds. And there are many other statistics which show that the, the challenges are significant and therefore we need action, not words. Uh, so if we think about why we need to do all of this, obviously there's an there's a ethical dimension. I think that giving opportunity to people from across all sectors of society is ethically right. But it's not just ethically right, it's also absolutely critical from a business point of view. Anybody who runs a production company who struggles to recruit people will know that unless we address the diversity and inclusion challenges, we can't address the skill shortage challenges either. They really are two sides of the same coin. So we need to learn from each other. I think one of, the, one of the best ways, and I'm hoping that this is what's going to happen today, that we can move this agenda forward, is by people sharing their practices, best practices. What's worked? What have they tried? What have they tried that didn't work? Uh, I think that we, if we do that, then we can really move the agenda forward. So although we're doing a bit of speechifying, and I won't go on for too much longer, and we've got a few other speeches, I think that today is very much about people talking to one another and learning from each other. So if we think about some of the things that we know that do and don't work in this space, uh, one of the things I think is absolutely critical is generating and using data smartly. If we don't understand the nature of the challenge, it's very difficult to sensibly address that challenge. So data is really critical. The second thing I'd list is the importance of leadership. I think we all know when we work, work in organizations that the culture of those organizations is very much set by the way in which the leadership behaves. That filters through the organization. So leadership matters, leadership from the top. And I think that that's critical and we need to address that. Thirdly, strategic investment. Little, little investments in little exercises which start and then stop and, and are sporadic and all over the place. That's not the way to address these issues. These issues are, are, are serious issues and I think they need to be addressed in a serious and strategic way. Uh, and we also have to recognize that although we want to make as many quick wins and make a difference as quickly as we can, this is also the long-term game. If we're going to make a huge difference and really change what this whole industry looks like in terms of its diversity characteristics, then we need to recognize that that takes time and effort and consistent and sustained effort. So the Screen Skills vision is that together, and critically this is together, we achieve a genuine, diverse, inclusive workforce at all levels in film, TV, visual effects, animation, games, uh, and, and all the rest of the sectors within the, the screen sector. And, and when I say at all levels, I think that's absolutely critical. Yes, we need to bring people in at entry level roles, absolutely, but we also need to help people progress their careers, stay in their careers, and go up the ladder. In fact, you could make an argument that that might be even more important than addressing the, the entry level roles. So today's conference, I think, is an opportunity for us to learn from each other and to really take a step in the right direction. Uh, I'm going to close in a moment, and I'm going to hand over to uh, an esteemed panel. Uh, I shall uh, show you who they are. Um, unfortunately, um, Sinead Rocks couldn't come, but the, but the, other, the other people are here. Um, so they'll, they'll, they'll have a panel session, and you'll get the opportunity then to have a bit of a conversation with them. And at the end of today, I hope that we've all learned from each other about what we can do together, collectively, to make a difference, and that we go away feeling that we're ready for action, not words. Thank you very much. So um, my name is Kay Elliott. Oh, yes, I've got a clicker somewhere. Here we are. Um, 
and I uh, look after high-end television at Screen Skills. Um, so those that you probably all know, but just those that may not, that essentially means any television program that's accessing the UK tax incentive, which they do if they are making shows worth a million pounds or more, um, can access the tax incentive, and then they're asked to pay into a skills fund, which is specifically there to look at the skills gaps, the need, the requirements to grow and develop the industry. And Screen Skills has got the role at to essentially deliver the bidding of the industry. So um, in terms of high-end TV, as I say, we're, we're very fortunate because it means that that gives us access to all of industry. So all of the UK broadcasters, increasingly all of the uh, streamers that are based in the UK and indeed all of the indies are engaged with the work that we are doing. So it means that we're not just doing investment in isolation, we're absolutely making sure that the money has been spent, which is their money, where it needs to go to really grow the industry. And that's not just in terms of shortage, that's also about skills gaps. It's also about a lot of the things that we talked about today on, on the panel. Um, so essentially, I think what's really key as well and fundamental, in a very quick changing industry, as we know, things are growing, things are changing hugely, particularly in television. So we need to be really dynamic and um, responsive to that. But I think what I really want to stress in terms of, and this is not just about high-end TV investment, but about screen skills as a whole, is that we don't see inclusion as other. That's that thing over there that we need to look at occasionally, and then let's get back to the day job. Obviously, it's through everything that we do. Of course, inclusion is absolutely fundamental. It, it, we're all something, aren't we? So it's incredibly important that we don't treat it as it's a problem that's here and then everything else is just the industry. So we're absolutely driving that through all of our investment and how that we work. And then I think finally, in terms of um, just for this slide, uh, I think the UK reach is really important as well. Again, we've heard... A, quite rightly, a lot about um, the brilliant move for Channel 4 and the great work ITV and BBC do and everybody else and the Indies here in Yorkshire. Um, and I think it's really fundamentally important that we are continually pushing that message about it being a UK-wide workforce. It's not when you do well, you might end up in London. It's absolutely about you can be successful and you can work anywhere. And again, for the investment in the programmes that we deliver, they are UK-wide, and if they aren't able to be, because obviously we only have so much money, we make sure we provide access through opportunity to obviously receive bursaries for travel, etc. So we are doing our best to really try and fight that. So... Um, this is just a snapshot of some of the stuff that we do. As they say, we work with every uh, drama and factual and comedy, in fact, that is accessing tax break to help them with their skills needs. Um, we do that in lots of different ways. Um, as I say, we uh, make sure that our investment is driven through our working groups, but we also do annual Hind TV focused skills uh, research, which again is talking to the industry, getting that feedback about how we're doing, what needs to change, what can we do to invest. Um, so how we kind of formulate in very broad brush strokes, strokes the investment, it's about new entrants. So how do we bring people in, but not just necessarily, oh, you've been to media school, oh, lovely, here's the door open to you. How do you open the door to people who have no idea? Jane was talking about it. How, how do you make that accessible for people who would never even consider it? How do you make it accessible for people whose parents might say, that's not a proper job? You know, how do we start to open that conversation up? So Screen Skills broadly does a lot, and Gareth, who's up next, will talk a bit more detail about that. But in terms of High End TV Skills Fund, we deliver Trainee Finder, which we've been running for about five plus years now, which is a new entrant program. It's available across the whole of the UK. We have trainees absolutely everywhere. And essentially, it's 12 months of paid placement. So it really is opening the door, giving people that first step in, not just a bit of training and off you go, but 12 months, essentially, of paid work on high-end television. Um, and then following on from that, obviously, as we can see, there's a list of all sorts of different shortage grades that we invest in. Again, again we do that training UK-wide. But then also make a move, and I think this has answered perhaps to some questions around how do you keep people moving on? How do you, how do you help people keep progressing their careers? So make a move provides production companies with up to £15,000 to essentially move people on. So you've been in this role, are you quite ready? We can provide a bit of investment to what we consider to be de-risk funding. So enabling you to take a chance on somebody so you can use that money maybe for a bit of training, for a mentor or for part of their salary, but just to keep it moving and giving people the opportunity to keep progressing forward. 
And then in terms of, as we were just talking about inclusion, there are some programs that we delivered. And again, Jane mentioned First Break, which I think is a, a program we're really proud of. We launched it in 2019 and we delivered the first in partnership with ITV. And essentially, that is again looking at that, absolutely that social inclusion piece. How do you open the door? How do you even know the jobs are available? So First Break is there to provide that. We don't talk about, oh, do you want to work in camera or costume? We talk about, are you practical? Are you a ideas person? Are you a talkative? You know, so we talk about more what skills do you have because there's definitely a role for you in the industry if you've got the right aptitude. So uh, first break, essentially, again, it's paid work placements. Again, nothing for free because, again, how can you possibly be try to be inclusive in terms of social inclusion if you're expecting people to do things for free? So we've got people on first break uh, between the age of 20 and 60. So, again, that age inclusion I think again is really important and that comes up in the diamond research um, both diamond uh, both uh, age and how do we bring more people in of all different ages into the workforce not just focus on people who are very young and, and, and as we've talked about obviously disability as well that's obviously really poor what do we do to really address that so looking to the future and leadership management probably is quite fundamental in terms of how we change the way people hire, how we change the way people lead their teams. So again, High TV funds training for production companies and also freelancers in those skills. And actually today, those of you who may have signed up, you will get a taster of that session, which we are rolling out across all productions who want it. So, of course, that's, you know, it's up to them. But it's free, and essentially it teaches people or trains people who have those leadership responsibilities in uh, how to be a good leader, how to manage well, how to be inclusive in how you hire. Um, and then I think finally for me, uh, just to look to the future, I mean, we've talked about this a bit. It's, I think it's really important not to just do a scheme, do a program, and then it's gone and away. So we try and make sure that we really embed and we look at a long-term sustainable uh, program of activities so that it's, it's also clearer. Because I think in this landscape when there's a lot of training happening, and that's brilliant, but it also can be quite confusing, I think, for people coming in to think, oh, there seems to be an awful lot of things that sound quite similar. So for screen skills, it's how do we kind of bring all that together, how do we scoop it together and support those individuals to find the right path for them and not have programs that kind of dip out, oh, that's not running anymore. So first break will run again, we hope with ITV and certainly with other broadcasters. And um, we're also delivering a new three-year fast track program, which is again about supporting that middle. And that's about inclusive talent. How do we keep people moving forward? And obviously, Trainee Finer continues to run and many other things. We do return to work. We've done that for five years as well. So again, helping people who've taken a career break to get back in. So um, also outside of high-end television, um, we have um, also a television skills fund, which has more bespoke investment. And that's focused on children's and also um, non-scripted, non unscripted. I can never remember which one it is. Anyway, factual stuff. So, which essentially is really focusing in on that, that element of the industry and how do we support people in, you know, because I've talked quite a lot about high end and drama, but obviously the whole of TV really matters. So, they focus on a number of different programs and please do check out our website because you can get all the information about everything that we do there. Um, but just to highlight a couple of programs with a focus from the TV uh, Skills Fund would be the disability awareness training and that's for production companies to kind of give them the tools to, um, obviously hire everybody, hire anybody, as long as they're great for the role. You know, you may have to make a very minor adjustment. Please don't discount hiring somebody just because you may think, oh, what's the barriers there? So we provide training for production companies to absolutely smooth that through. And we also can do um, assessments within their workplaces as well to say that's minor adjustment means everyone's good to go. And then also we have a bursary fund. We've got a broader bursary fund, which is available. So if you are a freelancer, please do come and check that out. But we also have within the skills fund a diversity element to that as well. So again, trying to kind of hone that investment. So that's me. I'm going to hand you over now to Gareth, who will uh, fill you in on his side of, of, of screen skills. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Gareth Ellis Unwin. I'm the head of film and animation at Screen Skills. Um, but I feel a shared responsibility in this room because prior to joining Screen Skills, I was an independent producer for a number of years. So I do feel that some of the things that we're addressing today sort of happened on my watch. Um, but I recognise that we need the collective effort and endeavour of the entire industry, both those that are on the inside of industry, but those, also those that are in peer organisations, to come together and to address some of these challenges. 
And at Screen Skills, we definitely have an ambition that we want to improve how we work. And I do take on board the feedback we've been given today. And uh, if any of you have any further feedback that you can offer, um, there will be some sheets going around at the end. We do want to make diversity and inclusion good practice run through everything that we do. We can improve. So on the film side of things, um, the Film Skills Fund, which I look after, invests in a number of different ways. Probably the best known initiative is Trainee Finder. Um, we've just finished this year's induction and training and we will have 138 people of a variety of grades, a variety of ages and a variety of backgrounds that will be on the programme and available to film productions that are paying into the Skills Fund to be deployed. I'm pleased to say that we've met and exceeded a couple of the targets that we work towards. Um, some of those to share with you, so 24% against the 20% black, Asian, minority, ethnic. Um, superseded uh, split in terms of women, uh, so 71.4% on this year's cohort, and we have gone slightly beyond our disability target, achieving 16.5% of those on this year's intake. Uh, they will be available for productions as of the end of this month. Um, other things that we um, do in terms of encouraging people to, to look to the industry. So we ran our first event, Skills to Screen, at Pinewood this year. That was deliberately marketed as opportunity to those that have existing skills. Um, how we marketed this was, you know, if you can build kitchens in Uxbridge, you can build sets in Ivor. If you can um, plumb a... Uh, immersion heater in, you could probably set up a 12K light on set. So looking at opportunity to bring people in from outside of the industry, but with transferable skills. Um, mental health awareness training and also futures leaders in distribution were particular initiatives that encouraged uh, a better and more diverse uh, recruitment. Unconscious bias, I know we heard about that earlier. Um, it is a very present thing in recruitment practice and also voting practice. Those of you that were observing some of the commentary around this year's awards will recognise the fact that um, this is something that all of the awards organisations are looking at. And we did work very closely with BIFA on this year's selection where every single one of their voters went through some unconscious bias training ahead of casting their vote. Um, we had a, a very full year in terms of our screen skills bursaries and our mentoring network. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in terms of our new and future plans. So things that are coming down the track. Make a Move Film is a progression um, initiative where we want to work with productions who have identified someone from an underrepresented group that are on a trajectory to promotion, but that production might need some of our financial support and our pastoral support to be able to de-risk that potential promotion. So Make a Move Film is something that uh, we will be strengthening this year. Our bursary provision is very important because we try and open up and uh, meet some of the barriers to entry. Simple things like wet weather gear. If you can't stay warm and dry on set when you've got that first opportunity to go and work on a show, uh, chances are you'll fall ill and not be able to turn up on subsequent days. So you can come to us for wet weather gear. Learning to drive, we can help support. Access bursaries, we can help with support. Um, we have some guidelines that are published on the website. One thing I'd really encourage you to do if there's something that you're looking for and you can't easily find it within the guidelines, please pick up the phone or drop us an email. We are human beings. We want to make this better. Um, so do please reach out to us if you can't find a, uh, some form of support that's on there. Um, Skills to Screen will run again, this time outside of Pinewood. So we've got an event in Belfast, Cardiff and um, Glasgow coming up this year. Our careers work continues unabated, I think, we were uh, in attendance at sort of 50 plus different events. So the conversation that we've been having earlier with the panelists about how do you introduce school aged children to the world that we enjoy as um, screen professionals is very much part of the work that we do. We actually did a uh, careers campaign last year where we dropped three ads alongside Secret Life of Pets 2, Aladdin, Rocket Man, and each of those um, adverts were about jobs that really exist that are beyond just the typically identified roles of writer, producer, actor, director, uh, and that rolled out in cinemas last year. So 1.7 million kids or people with those children that were watching those movies got a little glimpse of what we do in the screen industries. 
Um, and then most recently you will have seen uh, press around the launch of our apprenticeship program with both Warner Brothers and Netflix trying to lobby government to create a way that the apprenticeships can be better repurposed to work for the creative industries. So those are now up and, up and running with Warners and Netflix. Um, in terms of geographical um, diversity, I was here just last week um, la launching the Centre of Screen Excellence um, for, for Yorkshire and Humber. It's six pathways in the craft courses that will hopefully give an alternative to graduate level learning and finding your way into the industry. That's now being run in conjunction with Screen Yorkshire and a number of institutions that are on the connected campus that was mentioned earlier. Uh, and thank you for your attendance today. So enjoy the rest of the afternoon and we hope it is a good session. <laughs>